make it go away. All right, let and lambda. So this one is about rewriting let expressions as lambdas and lambdas as let. I've already downloaded it. Okay. All right. I think we just need to do typing for this one. We don't need to use the um, the drawings. Okay. So remember, let is a dy dynamic creation of a procedure and then its application. So what we can do, I'm gonna I'm gonna put um, that on a new line so we can like comment this out and replace it. Um, so we're going to replace that with the corresponding lambda. So how many um, how many parameters will the lambda have? Two. They'll have two. Yeah. So the the, and the names of, of the parameters are A and B, and then this becomes the body of the lambda. So essentially what we're doing with let is we're creating an environment where A and B have bindings, and then we're evaluating an expression in the context of that environment. And that's exactly what lambda does. So we can say lambda of A and B, and then in the context where A and B exist, we're going to run the body, which is square A and square B. So there's the lambda, and then we immediately apply the lambda to um, two values for a and b. And so in, what? Sorry, I'm looking for tab to work, and it's not doing what I thought it should do. Yeah, okay. Oh, all right, that's right. So a gets applied to plus um, x, y. So this this lambda gets applied to a pair of parameters. Um, that's the first one, and the second one is minus x, y. And now we need to close that paren, and then this paren closes the whole procedure for prop one. So this lambda and that let are identical. I mean, they're actually exactly correct. What we're going to do in class on Monday is we're going to write code that accepts a let expression and then rewrites it as this lambda expression and then evaluates the lambda expression. And that's the right model for what um, Scheme actually does. So let, the idea of let is that it's, um, it's syntactic sugar. You, you, it, you didn't need to change the underlying feature of the language one iota. All you had to do was write a rewrite system um, and Scheme actually has a macro language that allows you to do things like that. Well, we're not going to study it in this class. Um, but let is, a, in fact, a macro that accepts things of the form that it, it is defined as, and then it rewrites as a lambda, and then it just evaluates a lambda. So, okay, so now it's just more of the same, although I think there's one case that's more interesting. So this one, let's do the same deal of commenting it. Right, I'm going to comment these three lines. Okay, so this one has three parameters. So it's a lambda of A, B, and C. In the context of A, B, and C having bindings, we're going to multiply them. So that's the, the, the corresponding lambda. And then we apply it. Create that procedure and then apply it to three values for A, B, and C. So it's plus N1, plus N2, and plus N3. Yep, that's that one. Okay, why don't you guys why don't you guys do this one? That one's the actually the interesting one. Why don't you take a like two minutes and do that one yourself and then then I'll go over it with you.
I'm going to pause the recording, so we'll come back in two minutes. Okay, so we've resumed. We're going to do this procedure three. Um, okay, well, let me, let's just unpack it. Um, so it's nested, but let's just do the first one. So we're going to do the, the outer let is a binding for A, and then it has a, um, it has a body. Um, and its body is that. That's the body of the outer let. So I'm, I'm going to leave that one intact. One. Proxy B of N. So we'll do the outer one first. So it's going to be a lambda of A. And in the context of that lambda, it's this let. Where's that thing end? Yeah, there. Oh, is this right? Oh, that's two characters on here. Um. Okay, so that's the outer, the, the, uh, that's the lambda associated with the outer let, and then we have to apply it to its binding. And so that is going to get applied to um, m plus 1. So I think that's good. Let's play with it a little bit. We can just call it, give these some values. So let's proc 3 applied to 5. And proc three B applied to five. Well, that's encouraging. Um, oh, all right, let's keep going with this. I think I might end up making proc three C so we can see all the steps. I just want to put that on a new line. Um, yeah. So all we did was unwrap the first one. So let's unwrap it again. I'm going to copy paste and make it proc 3C. Okay, so now we're going to deal with this inner uh, let. And so that's another lambda and application. So that's a lambda of B. And in the context of that lambda, it, we are going to add A and B. Bye, Giuseppe. He left. He didn't say goodbye. Oh, he did say goodbye. <laughs> um, okay, so that's uh, that's the body of the the second let, and then it's it's what it's a um, it's that it's applied to this, so it. That's what B becomes. B becomes times A2. So we created that lambda, and now we apply it to times A2. And that's that let expression. And we just need to close the parentheses properly. I think that's it. Yeah. You can see why let is good, because these lambdas are getting, like, ugly. It's just, you know, I think this is especially confusing when you're, like, you're writing code that has no deep meaning. It's just these mathematical symbols. It's harder to wrap your head around it. At least it is for me. Like, if, if you had some logic to why you were doing this, it would be a little bit easier. Um, but pretty much in the context of the outer lambda, A has the binding plus N1, and then in the context of the inner binding, B has the, the value A times 2. So A, A is plus N1, so A exists, and then B is times A2, and then in that inner context where A and B both exist, we're adding A and B. This one's actually worth drawing out. 
I want to draw these because like that's part of the story. I don't think that was was that part of the assignment to actually make drawings for these? No, not for these. Okay. Well, we should do it anyway. Let's do the first one. So now that like now that we have um, thinking about I guess yeah, so let's 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 imagine we apply that procedure to something. So we have a global environment, we have procedure one, which is a procedure that has parameters are x and y and the body is a lambda the lambda of a b blah 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 and then it gets applied at the end to those like plus x y and minus x y okay and then we say let's give it some like some concrete values, like we apply PROC 1 to 3 and 4. Let's do that. Okay, so a frame gets created where X gets bound to 3, Y gets bound to 4. This frame isn't going to have like, this is not about the whole chain of frames deal, but anyway, it, 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 it's at top levels, so that's where that frame links back to. Then in the context of this frame, this gets evaluated. So that body gets evaluated. So a lambda gets created. So lambda of A and B um, evaluates. So that makes a new procedure. That procedure has its parameters A and B. Um, its body is the, um, I'm looking at the screen, the body is the plus square thing the plus of square A and square B. This, okay, this in, um, environment pointer matters. This lambda is created in the context of this frame. So it's, it's, it's got X and Y. It's closed over the values for X and Y. So then in the context of that frame, the square things run. Square, wait a minute. Oh, sorry. I went ahead one more step. Um, okay, the body of the new lambda is square A and square B. So this this got this got created, and then it gets applied to these two values, right? So this lambda is is generated from this expression. Um, so now we create the lambda, and then we immediately apply it. That's the whole deal with let it creates a lambda and immediately applies it. So we do get a new frame. This frame is created um, for the application of this procedure, which links up to here. And then its parameters are A and B. So A gets bound to plus X, Y. We've got X and Y, so that's 7. B gets bound to minus X, Y, so that's 3 minus 4 is a minus 1. And then in that context, this body runs. So we get plus of square A and square B. And so it should produce, actually, well, let's like actually do this. So this should be 49 plus 1. So we should get a 50 coming out of this thing. Let's check that. I gave it a three and a four. Yay, it worked. This sort of thing I actually like do expect you guys to be able to do. Does this make sense? Or did we get lost? Uh, this is making sense.
Okay, why don't you guys try going the other way. So let's take two minutes and do proc four. And then we'll come back. So I'll stop the recording and we'll come back in two minutes. Okay, so we're back and we're going to rewrite proc four from a lambda into a let. I'm going to copy and paste it. Okay, so um, what variables are getting defined by the lambda that then would become the variables of the let? It's A and B, right? So in this lambda is creating a, con a frame where A and B get bindings, and then we could see that the, this lambda is then applied to that becomes A and that becomes B. And then the body of the lambda, which is the body of the let, is just this one expression multiplying A and B. So, okay. So we're going to say let um, A gets bound to the first thing. B gets bound to the second thing. And then in that context, in that frame, oh, I need a close paren. Yep, I need another close paren. So then in that context, we evaluate the body, which is this. So that's it. Look okay? Um, is there anything interesting? Let's do, why don't I give you guys like a minute to do proc 6, because this one's basically the same. Um, let's do proc 6, so I'll, um, I'll stop the recording, come back in like two minutes and see, that one's going to be one of the nested forms, so that one should be slightly more interesting. Um, we'll be back in two minutes. Okay, so we're uh, we're recording again. So we're going to um, we're going to unpack this one. So this is nested lambdas. It'll become nested lets. Um, copy paste it. Okay, so the outer thing is we're creating a world where n has a binding and n is going to be this value. So n is going to be b plus c. So let's start out by doing that. So it's a let expression where n is, sorry, I'm just gonna scroll it. n is going to be plus bc. And then in the context of that frame, we um, have a binding for m, where m is plus a n. So let um, M be plus, it's this, it's not, this is the thing that become, that the inner, inner lambda gets applied to this. So that's what M becomes, plus A M. Um, notice that, Okay, let me just finish the body. And then the inner the innermost body is this. So the final result is we're going to then in the context where n and m and m exist, we want to multiply them. So that's like the whole story. Um, notice that um, m is computed based on what n is. So n needs to exist exists in order for M to have a binding. So these have to be nested. We can't, we, like, we couldn't just make this one let. Like, if we were to try to get rid of that let and say, make this parenthesis for the right thing to happen. If we were to try to do that, oh, wait, there's still some extra paren thing going on that I'm confused about. 
No. What's going on? Well, this is the initial problem that I'm worried about. There. If we were to try to do this and say let m be b plus c and let m be a plus n, that would fail. And why would that fail? Uh, it's out of scope. Isn't that what let star is for? Yeah, you're looking ahead. That's what let star is for. And yes, and we'll look at let star in a moment. And the, the, the particular reason why this fails is at the point, at this point, n doesn't exist. And if, the, if it were written just like this, it's a procedure application of n and m to two values. And so, like, yeah, n is like what you said, Josh, it's out of scope. So that, that's no good. So instead, what we have to do is say, we've got a lambda where n has a value. And in the context of that, then we're going to let, let m have a value based on n. And in the context of that, we can multiply n and m. If we define M as in Mary as the sum of um, A plus B plus C, is that also considered acceptable? Yeah, then we would not need it to be, it would not have to be nested, Steve, because then, right, M as in Mary would not be referring to N, and then it would just be, a, like, then it would be sort of equivalent to one of these earlier examples where we're just, you know, we're, we, we just have two, two parameters to the lambda that are independent. Yeah, so then the last part of the story is that, that there's an invention called let star, which is explicitly for this case, where um, what let star does is, um, is it treats a series of lets as, um, as, as if you were intending them to be evaluated sequentially, and the only way you can do that is tra to transform them into nested lets. So the, uh, let star is a, um, is, is a syntactic sugar for nested lets. So why don't you take a minute and transform this into a let star. So it's sort of a two-step operation in the sense that you're going from lambda to let, but then you're also going to let star. Does that make sense? What the problem is? Yes. All right. So let's take a couple minutes for that, and we'll be back in two minutes. Okay, we're back, and we are rewriting this proc six uh, star as a let star. So I think I'm just gonna try rewriting. This one. Call it that. Okay. So looking at the, um, the lambdas, um, n gets bound to plus, a, b, plus b, c, m gets bound to plus a, n, and then in that context, we take their product. So this one's all set up to be a let star. So that's actually, we, that's let star. And we're like, okay, n gets bound to plus b, c, m, Gets, and now, and now when we're at the point where we're running this line of code, n exists. So we can say that n is, oh, sorry, m is in Mary, is plus a n. n exists because it will actually be nested when it gets um, transformed. And then in that context, we, what's the body? It's times n n. Yeah, that's it. I think we're done. Do you guys have any questions? Any like thing more you want to talk about? I had a question on the let star. Yeah. Um, does that create? Does that just um, create another frame right away? And then once that frame's defined, does that um, just get applied? Um, we could 
draw this one up. So the way to think about this is that if you were to write this code, Scheme rewrites it as that. Like that's actually what happens. It rewrites it as those two lambdas, um, and then it and then it evaluates them. So, um, so it it will create. Yeah, let's actually draw this one out. Problems worth doing. Oh wait a minute! Before I do this, let me make sure the whole page is exposed. All right. So let's say we were to um, we were to ev evaluate like proc. Six. I'm going to write it as the lambda version because that's like more directly what's going on of one, two, three. All right, so we have a global environment where proc six star is bound to a procedure where the param is the params are A, B, and C and the body is the nested lambdas. Um, and now we want to evaluate proc 6 star of 1, 2, 3. So the first thing that happens is the environment frame gets created where the parameters of that lambda get the concrete binding. So A gets bound to 1, B gets bound to 2, C gets bound to 3, links back up the global environment. That's not going to really be interesting in this case. Now the body gets evaluated. Okay, so it's this body that's actually highlighted in the code buffer. So the first thing that happens is it encounters a lambda expression. So lambda of n. So a procedure gets created. Um, that procedure is going to link back to the frame. So the body is getting evaluated in this context. So it's going to uh, the new procedure will link back to that frame. Um, that procedure has its um, parameter is n as in Nancy. And its body is another lambda. It's a lambda of m as in Mary. OK, so that procedure got created. And now it gets applied to something. And what does it get applied to? It gets applied to this sum plus bc. So the procedure exists and now it gets it gets applied. So a, a frame has to be created for its application. Um, the, um, the application is happening in the context of this frame so we'll link back here and now n get n as in Nancy gets a value and it's um, b plus c so that'll be five. Okay, and then in the context of this new frame, this body gets evaluated. So that lambda of m gets evaluated here. Mary, m is a Mary. Um, okay, well, so I guess we have to create another procedure. That procedure links back to the frame which was created. Um, its body is, um, its parameter is its parameter is M as in Mary. Its body is, this is actually like the payoff body that we, we you know, will generate our final answer. So it's, this is the body times Nancy Mary. Okay, so that procedure is created and then it's applied to this parameter. So another frame gets created links back to the frame of this procedure and M gets a binding M gets bound to oh I just highlighted it plus a and n so now we can see that the a and n exist in different frames so n exists because we're inside of the outer lambda and then a exists because of the parameter to the, the overarching procedure so we're adding them, so M as in Mary gets bound to 6. 
And then in the context of this frame, this body gets evaluated. So we multiply 5 times 6 produces 30. Let's actually run the code to see if we did it right. So proc 6 star 1, 2, and 3 should produce 30. Hey, it worked. 30 is off the page there. What do you think, Steve? Thank you. That clarified some things. Yeah. Yeah, so the let star is syntactic sugar for this. And the right way to think about it is if you write code like this, scheme transforms it to that and then evaluates that. I think we're done. Thanks, you guys. This is like much better because you are here. Thank you so much.